Juliet from Spoiled Russian Meats and today I am going to show you how to make a micro macrame wrap bracelet. We've made this wrap bracelet in lots of different colours, we've really had great fun with it actually. So I've got a few colours here on my macrame board that I'm just going to talk you through. Um, so this lovely one was made by Viv and we have called it Cherry Blossom. Then we have got Aegean and I think it was Mandy who made this one. Sweet Pea, that was made by Andre. We have got Bur um, Bermuda, that was made by the lovely Lynn. Um, this one is called Strawberries and Cream, and this is really pretty. And this was made by Sophie, who's working with us on her work experience at the moment. And then this one is a limited edition kit, which is called Wimbledon, and it was made by me, and it's got the lovely Wimbledon colours there. And it's even got a 2017 charm and a little Wimbledon tennis racket and ball there. So I'm going to show you how to make these and uh, show you how to get started and I hope you'll make along with me and have lots of fun. So to make these lovely macrame wrap bracelets you're going to need a macrame board like the one that I'm working on here. You're going to need some scissors, a macrame pin, a button to use as your clasp and a charm and a jump ring. I've got a five millimeter jump ring here and a little unicorn charm. You're going to need some GS Hypo Cement glue to finish off your final knots with and you're going to need some super long bead cord. It comes in so many different colours. Um, I'm going to be showing you with the pink and the purple together today just to be using the two separate colours to make it easier for you to follow the beginning of my piece. So I'm going to be using two separate colours but generally I tend to use just one colour but it does look really pretty when you mix your colours. You're also going to need some six millimetre fire polish bead and again these these come in loads of different colours as well. Okay, so we've made these wraps nice and long so that they go four times around your wrist. Um, to make a wrap that went four times around my wrist, I needed to make my wrap around about 69 to 70 centimetres long, but you may want to measure your own wrist so that you can you can work that out before you get started. Um, so my, my wraps are around about 69 centimetres long in total. Um, so what I did was I started off with two lengths of my super long bead cord. Each length I cut them to be three metres long. And then what you need to do is take your button and pop the two ends of your super long bead cord together and and thread those through your button and then take the other end of your thread and thread those through your button as well and let your button fall into the center of your cord so my button is now in the center of my cord and then what you need to do is to just tie a knot in all four of those cords. So I'm going to just loop my cords over and tie a knot. And as I tie that knot, as I tighten it, I'm going to push it down so that it sits really nice and close to that button. I'm going to pull my threads nice and tight. So give it that a nice tug. So my my um, knot is now sitting really nice and tight to my button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my macrame pin and I'm going to secure my button in the centre of my macrame board there, like so. So I've just gone through the cord, um, between the cords there, just above that knot. And then I'm going to separate my cords out. And just so that you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm going to be, I'm using these two different colours today. So I'm using um, pink and purple. And I'm going to use my pink cords as the centre um, or the um, the threading um, cords for my piece. So I've secured those down the bottom of my board. And if I turn my board down, you'll see I've just tucked them, those pink cords there into the, the middle of my board there. And then with my other two cords, I'm just gonna let those fall to the side for the moment. So there's my macrame board all set up there and ready to go. Um, and what I'm gonna do now before I go any further is actually thread some beads onto my um, central cords here. And what I've done is I have trimmed the ends of my thread. I'll just bring them up so you can see. Um, so you can probably see that there. I've trimmed them so that they've got a slight point to them. So I've just trimmed them with my scissors just on the, on the angle so that they've got a little point and that will make it easier for me to thread my beads. The other thing that I've done is I've actually stiffened the ends there with a little bit of this amazing stuff here which is called fray block. Fray block is brilliant stuff Stuff because that will stiffen the ends of your cord so if you're having difficulty threading your beads um, then I would recommend using some fray block 
And what I'm going to do now is just holding those cords together is I'm just going to thread on some beads here. So I've got my six millimeter fire polish beads and I'm just going to thread on some beads and um, bring those onto my cord. And because I'm just demonstrating for you now, I'm not going to thread on all the beads that I need for this project. Um, but if I was going to be making a full bracelet here, um, I will, I would be threading on as many beads as I could at this stage. So you can see there we are going, I've, I've threaded on three beads there and I'm just going to secure my thread back down at the base of my macrame board. And I'm going to show you how to get knotting because if I take one of my finished bracelets here, okay, you'll see that what I've done is I've done some knotting before I've added the beads. So you can play around with the spacing on these when you get started. I mean, on, on some of these I've been quite even and I've done six knots before I've started using the beads. But on the lovely strawberries and cream version here, um, we have just done it a little bit randomly actually, just for a different effect. And you can see it looks equally effective. So you don't have to be even about how you space the beads out. It's really up to you and have fun playing around with it. But um, that's enough of me talking. What I'm going to do now is show you how to get started. So you can see I've got my central pink threads here and either side I've got my purple threads. So I'm going to take my purple thread there and lay it across the top of my pink threads there, which have got the beads on. And it kind of looks like I'm making, um, well, from my angle, it looks like I'm making a letter P there, really. Um, and then I'm going to take the thread on the other side and take it underneath underneath those pink threads and underneath this um, thread here on that I've just made the loop with and up through the middle of that loop and I'm going to pull that tight like so and then I'm going to do the thing, same thing on the other side so I've made a loop and I'm going to take the thread on the other side this thread and take it underneath the pink threads and up through the middle of that loop that I just made there and then I'm gonna pull that nice and tight whoops it's just slipped out there we go pop it over the top so to make the other side I'm making a loop and then I'm gonna take the thread on this side and take it underneath and up through that loop I've just made there and pull that nice and tight and that now, when you've done both sides, that is one complete square knot. And I'm going to do this six more times. So I'm taking my thread over the top to make that loop. And taking the um, thread on the other side, underneath these pink threads and up through that loop that I've just made. And pulling that tight. Do it on the other side. Going, making the loop, going underneath and up through that loop. Pull it tight, that's two complete square knots now. I'm going to do it again, this side, underneath and through that loop. And the other side. Take it underneath and through. Pull it tight. There we go. Um, so that's three complete square knots. And I'm hoping you can see this on the video here. You can see it's three knots because on each side, I've got three, um, what I call bobbles really, three bobbles either side, three of those um, loops on the top there. And just so that you know, if you get stuck or you go away and you start, you start knotting and then you forget which side you've got to do next, you always know that the side that you've got to start knotting next, the side you've got to make the loop with next, will be the side where you've got a little bobble on the side there. Um, so you can see my, my little bobble, my little bump is on this side at the moment, it's not on that side. So I know that this is the side I've got to make my next loop with. So I'm making a loop passing the other thread over underneath and up through repeat on the other side over and up through you'll find you get really quick at this after a while so that's four knots there and 
There you go. And this side. And I think that's looking just about right now and I think I should probably add a bead in. There we go. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bead in at this stage. So I'm going to slide my bead up like so and then continue knotting. So and my, my bump is on this side so that means this is the side that I've got to make the loop with. So I'm making a loop just as I would before. You just basically ignore that bead um, and take the thread underneath and up through Pull it tight and you'll see the thread wraps around the bead. Do the other side, take it underneath and up through. Just continue knotting now in exactly the same way. So make that loop go underneath and up through. And again. If you make a mistake and um, you think you've knotted the wrong side it's really easy just to unpick it and it's also easy just to use your little macrame pin to unpick it if you need to as well there you go. so I'm going to continue knotting like that for a little bit and then I'm going to come back to you okay so I've been knotting for a little bit now and I've got my second bead on here and I've tied a one complete square knot after it and I thought that now would be a good time for me to show you what you do when you run out of your working threads because these threads here you will find they run out even if you've cut them three meters um, the, 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 the thread to be three meters long you will find if you're trying to do a wrap that goes four times around your wrist that that won't be enough and you'll need to add some thread on but the good news is it's really easy to do that. There's two different ways of doing it. You can either get to this stage like I have done here and right now you can use a little bit of hypo cement and pop some hypo cement on that last knot that you've got, leave it to dry and then trim the ends off. Another way though is to bury these ends um, inside your next knot when you add on your next thread. So if you're going to do that, what you want to do is just bring those threads that you're going to be finishing off to the center there um, and tuck them into your macrame board so that they then sit nice and securely. And then take your, your new thread, pass it underneath everything, and then just continue knotting. So I am going to make a loop, pass my other side underneath everything and back up through just exactly the same as you were before but you're just effectively burying these ends there in your in your macrame wraps as you tie them so I've pushed that right nice up close against that last knot there so you can't see um, and again I'm just going to continue knotting and once you've done a little bit of knotting um, sort of three or four knots it will be nice and secure and those threads will be buried and you'll be able to trim them off. So I'm just going to carry on knotting for a little bit and then I'll show you just that trimming them off stage. So now you know how to add on more thread as you go and if you want to when you add on more thread you can switch to another colorway that can look really effective so you can switch your colors um, throughout the length of your piece if you like and you can you can see you can't see those threads that are buried in there at all once you're happy that they're nice and secure which I think I am now then you can trim them off so before I go any further I'm just going to trim off these threads here um, that I was finishing off. There we go, I've trimmed those off and I've got tiny little bits there left which will be covered up next time I knot. As you make that knot to cover up those bits, just make sure that you push it over the top of them so that you bury them, bury those ends and you can see they're nice and effectively buried now. board up you can still see what I'm doing there. So 
I'm going to tie a few more knots and then move my next bead up. So I'm going to move my next bead up there and just continue knotting. So I'm just going to continue knotting now and then I'm going to show you how to finish off, how to make that loop that you use to fasten your bracelet with. Okay, so I've been braiding for a while now and my bracelet will fit just about once once round my wrist now. So I'm going to show you how to finish off because I'm just making this one just to demonstrate for you how you start and how you finish and how you add your threads. So I'm not going to make this one big enough to go four times around my wrist. It's just going to be big enough for once around. And you can see that as I've been braiding and my, my macrame has been growing, I've been moving it up my board so that my braid um, falls off the end of my board because it's just easier to work towards the top of your board really. Um, so I've um, knotted around my last bead here and what I want to do now is to make the clasp loop. So you'll see with these bracelets here that they all fasten with a button and the button goes through a loop. That's how they're fastened. So I just want to show you how to make that clasp loop there. So to make the clasp loop, you get to the point where you want to begin the loop and then what you need to do is braid yourself around about three centimetres. You will need to measure how long you need it to be because it will depend slightly upon the size of your button. But in my experience, three centimetres tends to work really well. So I'm just going to sit here now and I'm just going to keep knotting and I'm going to knot around about three centimetres. So I'm going to come back to you when I have made around about three centimetre length of knotting there. Okay, so I've been braiding for a little bit now and you can see that my, um, my length here of braiding measures actually measures just over three centimeters so between three three and a half centimeters is going to be just about right so i'm going to show you how to finish off and make that loop now so i'm removing my um my middle threads here from my macrame board and what you want to do is fold over your braid there so that you're making a loop there and then what you need to do is just do two full macrame knots, two full square knots on top of both of the up, upper and the lower um, piece of the, the braiding just to knit them together. So I'm gonna do that right now. So it's exactly the same as before. I'm making that loop and passing my other thread underneath. You just want to pull it nice and tight, push it right up against that last bead. Do the other side. And do it one more time. I'm just going to push it up so that I keep those knots as close to each other as I can. I'll do my last one there. Pull that really nice and tight. Make sure it's all pushed up as high as possible up against that last bead there. And there we go. So that has now made that loop you can see there that we can then use to fasten our bracelet with. So to finish off my threads, all I'm going to do is use my GS Hypo cement and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the um, last knot there and a little tiny bit of glue where the, the middle threads come out of my knotting there. And then you leave that to dry for 5-10 minutes and then I'll be able to trim off my tails of thread. Whilst I leave it to dry, I'm, I'm gonna put my little charm on. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning there. See, this is just a little single wrap here. And I've decided to use this cute little unicorn charm there. The unicorns are always popular. And somewhere around here, I have got a jump ring. Okay, so I've got two pairs of chain nose pliers here. And what I'm gonna do is take that jump ring and grip it either side of the opening with my chain nose pliers. 
hold that down so you can see it focus there. Just twist it to the side to open it up. There we go. And I can slip on my little unicorn charm there. And I'm going to pop that across my braid between the button and the first bead. You don't have to put a, a charm on these things, but it can be really sweet and it's a way of personalizing it as well. Now you can see there is my, my little unicorn charm. And by now my threads will be, my glue will be nice and dry so I can trim off my tails of my thread. So I'm using these nice little bird scissors which mean I can get in really nice and close up against my knotting there just to trim off. There you go. Trim it off nicely. Um, and there is my lovely little macrame wrap. You can see this is just a little single wrap there, um, but you can make it into a double or a triple wrap. Just fasten it there, there you go. You can see that's all fastened in the loop there. You can make a double, triple, quadruple wrap like we've been doing. You don't have to use fire polish beads. There's lots of other beads that you can use. And you can see that I have got a different effect here because I've used the two colors. I've had the pink running through my beads. And because my beads are transparent, you can actually see that pink cord going through it. And it does give a really effective um, look there. And even on the button there, you can see a little hint of that pink cord there too. So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Do let us know what you think in the comments below and come back soon for more tutorials. Thanks, bye!